Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome. It's so interesting in the conference to know whether they're going to be two or 52 people. <laughs> yes, so um, <clears throat> I'd like to acknowledge, my name's Judy, and I'm from the Three Sides of the Coin project. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we're meeting on today and pay respect to the elders, past and present. So a, a brief synopsis of Three Sides of the Coin. It's a project of Link Health and Community uh, that uses creative storytelling with people who've experienced personal harm from gambling. And with our artistic director, Catherine Simmons, they learn to theatrically express their journeys into darkness and their process of healing and recovery. And as a consequence, they have become passionate advocates for change, igniting conversations about the impact of gambling in our community and framing this community problem as a public health issue. So they are our experts by experience who are educating experts by profession in professional development sessions about the intersections of gambling with mental health, family violence, drug and alcohol and crime. So just as the perspective, you know, Australia, we are the biggest losers in the world. We lose more money per capita than any other country in the world. 25 billion dollars a year and we actually spend 60 percent more on gambling than on alcohol and nearly three times what we spend on illegal drugs so re and recently oh well, i won't go into there well i'll then uh well maybe i will in the covid uh period we've recently learned that during lockdown, $1.7 billion was not lost to the poker machines. And now there's deep concern about what will happen when the venues are opening. So I'd like to, we've got a, a very packed program for you and I'd like to hand over to our artistic director, Catherine Simmons. Thanks, Judy. Hello, everyone. Welcome this evening. Here we are. So just very simply to say, um, you might think, what's the creative arts got to do with anything? So in this sense, the creative arts, as Judy said, is about um, when addiction has been a space of disconnection in this creative process of people reconnecting to their own stories and to each other's stories, and now to you, is a process of reconnection. And that's a really important space. And really, my role is to, is to listen deeply because it is the authority of the lived experience that becomes our teacher in this space. And I hope that you will see that shortly in the videos we're about to see. And uh, in normal times, I get people in a room and we tell stories and we perform and we take them out as, uh, as professional development. It's not for theatre, but it's the use of theatre to tell stories. And now in COVID times, we've adapted that practice online and you're about to see the films. So whilst you're watching these films, I put to you to question what's the cost, the real cost, what's lost, not only in the individual sense, but in the collective sense. How are we all involved in this? And that, that's kind of the conversation we'd like to frame with, in terms of social issues tonight. So that's enough. Let's get on with watching these videos. They are six minute videos approximately. After the video, I'll, I'll ask you to go to the chat box and just write your feeling response and maybe also your response to that question of cost. And then I'll be inviting Anna, who's the first video who you'll see, to comment and respond to that and we'll see the other three videos then we'll enter into more of a conversation all good great all right so without further ado i shall pass it back to judy and we shall watch the first video thank you here we go
And don't forget to um, perhaps minimize that small box at the top so you can see the video in full frame in speaker view. <clears throat> Are you sharing your screen, um, Judy? Sorry, I can't hear you, you're on mute. Oh yeah, can see. Okay, and, and just minimize the little box yeah. so you can watch it, that's it. Leave your troubles at the door. Can I get you, love? She remembered what I wanted. What can I get you, love? I'll be back. Words are running on a loop inside my head. on automatic. I don't remember driving in. Can somebody tell me where the exit is? How do you get out of here? I want my brain back. I want to stop. Po pokies? You can do this. One, two, three, four, five! Yes! I don't do that anymore. Free spit? No. Oh, there's a jackpot. Free, free drinks a pipe. No, I don't do that anymore. I don't but just one more. No. But no. I can do this. But it's not simple. I want it. God. How do you get help if you don't tell somebody? For years I walked past them, didn't even see them. Everybody takes a break and goes to the toilet and your brain works differently in there. I hope I can give up properly one day. God, the damn things are on every street corner. Just drive straight home. Shit, they're everywhere, aren't they? I've got to say, the counselling helped a lot. You're doing really well. It's really hard what you're doing. Recovery, let's call it what it is, to be recovered from this addiction. I see the truth. What my kids missed out on? Because I wasn't there. If you yell at yourself, if you call yourself a loser, it doesn't fix anything. You will not bully yourself you'll find a way bring kindness now i have a choice no more going to a venue or anything let's go somewhere else 
I'm more than that person who went gambling. Who else am I? That's a good question. The writer, the traveler, the singer, speaking up when I have something to say. The harm that gambling had done to me was real. Why do I do this? Be so public? There are thousands of people out there like me who were too ashamed to speak up. When you're in the depths of shame of a gambling addiction, you don't tell anybody. You don't tell yourself how bad it is. This is not fun. It's supposed to be entertainment. This is not entertainment. It's time to change. It's time to change the language. It's time to change the culture. Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. People often say to me, you're so brave. I was brave to go into recovery. That's brave. Recovery isn't going back to who I was before. It's becoming the person I was always meant to be. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Let's go back to gallery view. And please, if you can take to the chat box, like I said, feeling, thought, reflection into the chat box and I'll read it out. So firstly, you might want to put a feeling sense in, no right or wrong, and then maybe um, some thoughts around what's the cost. In terms of the video you just saw, what, what did it make you think? That'd be great. Hello. I just saw hello, sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. I felt it was such a good example of the layering and the layering of consumption. Mm, interesting. Yeah, look, your reflections are super important to our, our thinking in this space. So evocative and visceral, real. We are taught so deeply in our culture to consume. Scared of how bad it can get. Ah, uh, indeed. Something we all need to be aware of. So thinking about cost. What's the real cost? What's the loss? Feeling, spiralling. Mm, spiralling. Wonderful. We'll have more of a discussion with each other when we've all seen the three videos. So now I'm, I will introduce you to Anna who is here and Anna maybe pop forward a short reflection before we move on to the next video. Thank you, Anna. Thank you everybody. And thank you for the responses. Um, I suppose when I, when I, every time I watch that, I think again, that that was real. That was part of my life. It happened. 14 years now since I gave the industry any money and I don't plan to give them another dollar. But one of, there's so many things that need to be looked at and addressed as part of the culture of gambling in Australia. And one of them I would say was, is the hours that these places are open and how many of them there are. That they are literally, for those of you who aren't in Australia, they are literally on every street corner almost. And they're so easily accessible. In Victoria, they're open 20 hours out of 24. So big signs at the front saying nine to five and it's 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. And when you think about that, and the only thing that's open all of those hours is the poker machine room. And I was in there at three o'clock in the morning and I can tell you no one's having any fun and nothing good's happening there. So culture, this is a, this is a huge problem for uh, Australia and we need to address it. Thank you, Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there's some other great chats in there, but we'll move forward and accumulate that into the next space. So um, Judy, uh, hand it over to you and we move forward with Paul's video. Thank you.
My parents came here for a better life. Happy New Year! Good wealth and good health. Come here, Fartoya. To give me a better life. Bet. Bet. Better. During the day, they'll the markets, and then at night, they'd open up shop. We'll open seven days a week. My mother used to say, Go get your father, you know where he is. Better all your money, better life. T-A-B. Better money. A bar. Dad, let's go. Bet more, bet more for a better life. Who's the favourite? Dad gave me money, and that's when he was happy. I'm going to be Dad's favourite. I was betting by the time I was 15. Finishes school and he becomes an apprentice jockey. He shows really good potential, but he's betting. Betting every day of the week and he gets off track. Cash back, money back. Betting for that better life. Cash back, money back. More money, more money. Bank balance. One is 43 cents. Oh, shit. Who am I going to borrow money off? Send 45 texts. Can I borrow $100, please? Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Send. Where does everyone keep their friggin' money? I know. It's fraud. Nah, no, it's family. What happens if you lose it all and then you can't get it back? Cash back, money back! I can pay everybody back. On the inside, Midnight Warriors a couple of weeks away. My brother was away on a business trip. He trusted me with everything. Mortgage, first homeowner's grant, credit card, under my name. Click. One bit like yeah. Coming around the corner, it's fell long to each other. Yeah. Like, oh, well, Look who's account is going up, up baby. Up, 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 up. up. <laughs> Protest? What? Okay, 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 it's all right. Check your balance. Minus 20,000. Bet 10,000. Shit. Bet 20,000. <laughs> Bet 50,000. Bet 100,000. Been up 12 hours. Bet 20,000, bet 10,000, 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, 500, 200, 150, 20, bet 10. Zero. I lost the house. Brother's mortgage. What am I going to tell? I heard somebody say they pawn their toaster to get some money to gamble. I thought I was the only dickhead that do something like that. When the gambling stopped, it's scary. This empty who I am, who I really am, I'm still anxious. I'm still scared to face me. It's edgy, but it's okay. Psychologists, counselors, support groups, 12 step groups, I need more of this. My brother was really angry, as you would be. I didn't hear from him for at least a couple of years. I was too scared to actually contact him. And then when he texted me out of the blue, I was like, ooh, where's that come from? You know, a million things were going through my head. I was like, this might be the last chance. So what have I really got to lose? I was shaking. My palms were sweating. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> you know, he walked through the door. I was like, I can't even look at him. And I just dead stared him down the eyes and went, what's up? You know, and he said, you're my fucking brother and I love you. And then we spoke. You know, he, he, he said it was about the deceptiveness, not about the money. After that, we went and had dinner with my parents and my parents were so joyous and, you know, they hadn't smiled probably for years. My family's forgiven me, but can I forgive myself? Who am I? What are my beliefs? My values? I gambled to escape all my worries. I just never felt I was good enough. Running away was my number one thing. I was just like, no, I don't want to feel that. I was looking for gold. Just in all the wrong places. I didn't dare to look at me. I was too scared to look at myself. Because I was always, do I even like myself? No. 
So how can I love myself if I don't like myself? And now, with my feelings and emotions, I've learned to sit with them. Just be there. Be there, understand it, feel it. It's okay. Even though sometimes it's really difficult and quite ugh, a bit. So if I can't do that for myself, I can't do it for others. <laughs> I never liked anybody. I would have found everything bad about a person before I found anything good. Now I've changed 360 degrees and I have belief in everybody. I hear you, I feel you. Is there any way that I can support you? It's my purpose, my reason to share what I've learned through my journey. It's finding that inner peace, right? That's gold. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Back to gallery view. Thank you. So again, your feelings, thoughts, reflections, responses in the chat box. I'll read them out. And while you're writing, I might catch up on the few that were um, in response to Anna's video, just while you're writing. Cost. Narrative unfolding the way it does showcases internalised blame. Hmm. Sports gambling online is the real scary thing now in Australia, especially in young males. Constant advertising on TV during football games, kids are exposed and it's normalised. I did a research project and a few years back, it's only growing sadly, especially in COVID. Moving on from Paul's to Paul's. All I can say again is these are wonderful and powerful, painful, insightful, redemptive, courageous. It felt like that early gambling created shame so that Paul couldn't share it with others. And then that then made it grow and grow. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to get your responses in this space and your feelings and ideas. So, I um, mean, there's an opportunity. Let me ask you... Um, because we've got Paul's, Paul's response. Yeah, yes, thank you. So before we move on, Paul, um, perhaps you can offer a, a short sort of response to everybody, just whatever. Over to you. Uh, it's really identifying the self. So as you saw in the video, it was, it's a, been a massive journey in transformation from being an addicted gambler and also drug addict because I started that at a very young age. So I never knew who I actually really was. And in going and doing that, I was in search of who I am. And I think through recovery, that's what I've found. That sense of purpose, that sense of belonging, and a bit of reason to why I'm here, in a way. I think when, you, when I lost it at such a young age, um, you know, I started gambling at seven. I started drug taking when I was 12. So that's it's been a big part of the majority of my life and through recovery I've found out who I am and what I can really do and it's something probably that I didn't feel I was in my younger years. Thank you Paul. Insightful reflection. So um, to the few of us that are in the room we have the opportunity to move on to Chandana's video now or perhaps because um, Chandana takes us into a different journey because Chanda is an affected other from um, a close person's gambling. So in this case, would you like to ask Paul and Anna some specific questions or shall we watch Chandana and then accumulate and just ask, open up the panel? What would you prefer, audience? I'd what like do you want to do? See, I'd prefer to see the, the final video and then come back for chat if that's okay. First in best dressed, you won. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you. Uh, Judy, over to you and we'll watch Chandana's video. Thank you.
this is not the person i knew he said to me i would like to grow old with you he was a friend he called me kutima little mother he wanted me to be a typical indian woman why do you need to work do you really need to work you can take care of the house do you know my sister she gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning my mother does everything in the house no office nil vandirke enak tired a irukku samaikka kudada i didn't think this was him drinking drinking every single day drinking wherever you go you're drinking how do i stop you drinking we wish we just go away far from here let's go to california to uk what about india or canada or australia or somewhere else i was just hoping things will just turn out better australia doesn't have a drinking culture so i thought we came to australia with our two year old daughter we wanted to give her a good future good education more choices in life we did get excellent jobs with very high salaries oh fine we are doing very well we are just trying to settle in my daughter is doing really well she's even started speaking in english you know my job is going really well my husband he he's actually he's at work yeah he's doing really well he's working very hard you know it's very hard to settle in this country and uh, we are getting there thank you let's open separate accounts in australia my husband said i was earning well i was paying for our rent car child care my husband was taking care of all our accounts and time we had over 100000 dollars in our foreign accounts my husband he he's he is actually he is my husband is crying we had only been in australia for 8 months he said hana ellam poyidich i don't have anything in my accounts our foreign account his account our joint accounts empty ena gambling what do you mean you can't stop what about our daughter should i leave or should i stay what should i do i am so sorry sweetheart can't tell you a story today please please listen to me he's drinking a lot we've lost a lot of money i please hear my side uh, who do i have in this country to help me i don't want my daughter to what if i lose my job just keep quiet don't say anything maybe he will change sweet heart sit here the mummy has to go in okay play with the toys and come so i'm applying for an intervention order against my husband. what kind of a wife are you you going to the courts to the police enna problem ni vekkamalla unakku police ku pora court ku pora enna vekkamalla unakku aren't you ashamed of yourself my relative said it's your job he'll change if you are okay he'll be okay but i was terrified of my future basically i didn't have confidence in myself um slowly with the support of the psychologist and uh, the law enforcement i got some new perspectives every time i came home and something else happened why am i allowing this to happen i have to leave him the foundation of marriage is respect we may call love and all of the other things if your self respect is not valued in a relationship it's not worth it i was protecting something which was already gone to be honest i did not understand what gambling was actually i lied i tried to hide my situation you need to reach out for another person to support you and i wasn't ready for a long time people who believed in me they brought me out of my shell i could believe in myself without that i couldn't be where i am now so thank you and i am grateful for those people to be 
present in my life. What is it that I want? My values had changed from making money and a good life to making a difference. I started going out meeting other people who had gone through gambling issues and talking to them. When I come across women going through any issues, I tell them, speak up, talk to people, don't put a wall around you. Somebody will be able to help you. I've learned to let myself go, to not take things as seriously as I used to, to have some fun with my daughter. I always wanted to learn dance. I thought, I'm too old and I'm not good enough. I'm not young enough. But at this age, I started learning Indian classical dance with a group of people who were 10, 15 years younger to me. <laughs> I want to dance, I want to sing, I want to be happy. Thank you so much, Chandana. Thank you. Audience, please, people in the room, on the screen, to the chat box. Chandana, put your video on. All three were so powerful and courageous. Yeah, so just sort of, yeah, betrayal, yeah, but yeah, getting those themes out, that's really good, the costs that are inside it. Betrayal, confusion, bewilderment, loss, fear, hope, belief. Mm -hmm. I think this is so powerful and a way to get the message across. Working in the space with Chandra is amazing. We were her husband. That's coming from Anna, who's been which we'll, um, we can even talk about in a minute, you know, a g gambler herself. So, yeah, those reflections are important from you. So all three resonated strongly for me with so many other struggles we go through in life that have parallels. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think that's a really important message that we try to get across. So Chandana, I invite you to offer a, ref a reflection before we enter into a Q&A with our wonderful panel. Thank you very much, Catherine, and thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, actually, uh, as uh, my journey probably was a slightly different. Um, I came as a migrant to contribute to this country to, uh, you know, have a good life. But unfortunately, I became a cost as an individual as well as as a social cost, if you see. I was, uh, I was earning, uh, you know, six-figure salary. But then as a single mother, I had to quit my job. I went to the Centrelink, which I had never, ever, it had never happened to me in the past in all my working life. I, I had to go through the courts. The police were involved, family violence, counselors, psychologists. I had to go through so much and then still it's a broken family. And the cost for me as an individual and for my daughter as an individual and for the society as a whole it is huge and what's the point what's all this for uh, when i think about it it's just like um, mind-boggling so that's one of the reasons i quit my job from a completely different sector it sector and moved on to the social uh, social work sector because i still can't understand 
you know i am i have such great friends as anna and paul and so many others and i can't believe why this should happen why should this should be allowed to happen in the first place when it can be you know avoided such great you know contributions i don't know i mean i just i just every time i think I look at myself or anybody else's video uh, that's the question that we all need to think about thank you chandana for that yes definitely and i think that is the thing you know why do we end up in this place what are the factors in our culture and our society that lead us to this ruin ultimately obviously you the three of you were a testimony of recovery but in and in, in unpacking what that cost is to us as people and then the ignorance around it is something we can have a conversation so oh big audience please yes. you must speak up with questions we have three people here for you to question anna paul and chandala who are here to answer your question so go for it no oh, so it, it would be interesting to sort of know the perspective from which you're coming in your in your work and then we can uh, relate to that you, you take it wherever it's relevant for you we're here to for that yeah yeah so rachel leone and neil is somebody else in the room or that's it now <laughs> we've lost people that's okay you three are it and then you three are it <laughs> okay well, I can start if you like. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I collect stories. Basically, that's what I do for a living. I collect stories of people's experience, older people's experience of homelessness or risk of homelessness for the only organisation in Australia that um, is specifically for helping older people who are at risk of homelessness, which is Housing for the Aged Action Group, which is in Melbourne. Mm. And I'm... Um, I suppose this is why I came to this. I mean, I'm very interested in issues with gambling, living in Melbourne, living in Footscray. But I basically came to listen to, to see your presentation because I'm really interested in the other ways people collect stories. And I just think it's absolutely bloody fabulous. It really makes me just want to go back to Hag and say, we need to get the money to make some videos. <laughs> because I write. I collect people. People write their stories with me um, and I... Uh, they're all they're all written stories yeah yeah thanks that that's great Leonie. Did, come, come back to that thought i think there's something in can there. i can i comment on your point leoni because um homelessness is definitely an issue for many people who gamble yes um, they there are uh, there's so many i know a lot of people who lost their homes because of yes. gambling yeah um paul tells the story of losing his brother's home um and and for many crime is involved as well and so they go to people go to prison and then come out and have nowhere to live and have to live in substandard housing people are living in ways that they didn't expect to be living in their later years and gambling was the cause um, oh absolutely one yeah. one of my stories i've uh, just completed with someone in queensland she came, she was teaching uh, an older woman she was in her late 60s teaching in uh, china she came home and her husband had lost everything. Mm. Everything. She left the house with what the clothes on her back, basically. And yeah. she, yeah, yeah, so totally. And there, and there are a lot of people who go to gambling venues for shelter, if you like, because wherever they're living isn't oh, wow. appropriate or safe or whatever. And so they're, they're in a gambling venue to like to take shelter. And so they gamble and, it there as well. And, and you were saying how they, they're open all night, which they you know, are. Yeah. And you can move, the, there's always in, an, in areas, and I know this is true because people have told me, there, there'll be multiple pubs because it's the pubs that open that late and they'll stagger their opening hours so that there's always something open. It's, and um, the people for whom gambling is a massive problem, they just move from one to the other. It's, um, if I, if I yeah, agree. Neil, go, yeah. Thank you all so so much for that. I'm sorry, I'm, to, I'm battling a bit of a cold, so my voice is sounded. I sound like a jazz singer, but I I, um, I I just lost my voice a little bit. But my work has been in the area of uh, Aboriginal youth suicide for the last ten or fifteen years, and we've been doing a lot of work with photography and text. There's a book we did on, you know, with some of the kids, and and I'll be honest with you, I was attracted to the session because of the methodology, 
but I can honestly say it only reinforces the importance of this because I've learned more. And I, I knew that gambling was a problem. We, we, I get that. But I've learned more in 18 minutes than I've probably learned from reading dozens and dozens of research papers. Um, you know, the honesty, the connection. I often find that language surveys, quantitative statistics, um, all of these things create barriers to authentic representation. And, and I just think it's so important to, to have that direct, as I said earlier, that visceral connection with the lived experience of both those that have had gambling concerns and those that are impacted by it. And I'm reminded of the, um, the words, I think it was uh, Ron Harry said, for scientific purposes, treat people as if they were human beings. And it, for me, it's really lovely to connect with the human beings uh, that have had these experiences. And, and I, I guess I'm just interested in, I, I know how courageous it is to, to, to come forward in the way that you have, but I guess I'm just interested in a little bit of reflection about what that took. You know, I know it, it's in the films, but I also just wanted, I just wondered if you, if you wanted to comment more on that, because this is what, for me as a, as a, as a community oriented psychologist, connects me to, to, to the field. It connects me to what, what, I, what I care about in, in psychology in a way that quantitative methods and those one step removed methods just simply can't. So thank you, thank you all very much. And, and to the three si uh, three sides people for, for bringing the, uh, this to, to me. Thank you, Paul. Anna, Chanda, do you wanna add about the, the storytelling methods and maybe your transformation in that space? Because that is Neil a little bit, that's what you're curious about yeah. is just what that journey has been a little bit. Is that right? Am I right? Yeah, it, it, yeah to, the, yes. the, the brings you, to, well, it brings you in contact with his team to tell these, these wonderfully evocative and important stories that are so informative. As I learned more in 18 minutes than I've learned in, in probably 25 years about gambling. Well, uh, I, I, I could say, um, and Paul and Chandler can add to it, that um, the work, the work is, is advocacy. It's about using our personal stories to create change. But working the way we do gives us something else as well. It creates a support network and a, a structure and, and we create that ourselves. We, um, we ha there is the peer connection thing that is invaluable and, and we own it ourselves. And within the space, we have our own meetings and go back to the rest of the team and say, we'd like to do it this way. Um, we don't like this because of that reason. Um, because we, we believe very strongly that we do not, we don't want to just be the exhibits that get rolled out and said, now we have a real person, yeah. um, which has happened to most of us at one stage or another in some space or another. Um, there is a cost to constantly telling a story. Um, but so we try to e let that evolve and, and talk about the process of recovery more than just the sad, bad stuff, as I call it. Um, but, but the, the connection that we have to each other is deep and real and very valued by all of us. Yeah, I, I can sense that. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I would add the same. Uh, for me, um, as a migrant and not having any connections in the society and then going through this journey of, you know, um, like gambling and then losing my family and uh, uh, not having any support uh, for me connecting with people like you know Anna and Paul um, first I started with another program called Peer Connection which is you know talking over the phone with people who are currently uh, gambling or affected others um, and then I came across people who have been gamblers because I have never come across anybody except my ex-husband so for me, it was a journey of learning all through. What is the other side uh, of what I had experienced? So that actually, it was like a purging. It was kind of a, you know, transformation for me uh, to understand um, the, the entirety of this. You know, it's not just me and it's not just the person. So there's a lot more involved. So my anger came down and um, I started uh, connecting with other gambling um, harm programs like Respin, that's a speaker's bureau um, of gam ex 
gamblers and as well as three sides of the coin so this actually for me um i don't know what i would have done how i would have recovered or continued with my life if i hadn't come across these people and uh, uh, started understanding what the whole concept of gambling especially in australia is because i had come from united states i thought i kind of knew because i had gone to the casinos and so forth but um, for me yes it's a all new um, world that was open to me when i participated in How about you paul you got something to add oh uh, to answer drew's uh, sorry neil's first question you know what does it take i think it's the first step of recovery is like the first step of change for everything and part of the pun that was the probably biggest gamble of my life to actually go the other way rather than continue knowing what um i was doing even though it was destructive i knew the outcome so the shift and the change Um, when I tell my story through a podcast, I was trying to get up on a bus, and it took me about five times to get on a bus to go to a meeting, um, to a twelve-step meeting, and then from there, it shifted something in me that that hunger or that passion turned to recovery, and then through that, I started seeking out other forms of therapy, forms of support to benefit myself. because i've never had a space to actually talk about um my misdemeanors my own feelings my emotions and i found a space where i could say that without the shame because i always thought if i told somebody i'd be judged and then you know i'd be a nobody and then just have that sense of total embarrassment though it was the other way when i found out that okay you can say this and you can do this and then through that the exploration was really liberating um to change my mind because i had to really rewire my mind and my cycle of thinking that was one of the major stages and then working with two sides and now three sides of the coin has brought more been about the internal because my my mind and my brain was you know good i i don't do this that's not how, this is how i live now and i do certain things but internally something was still churning inside me there wasn't enough healing from the things that i'd done i sort of hadn't gone back in time and had a look at them i sort of suppressed a lot of it and denied a lot of it still and through doing this work of storytelling and doing it basically very publicly it's transformed myself in taking responsibility and accepting of my story and not being ashamed of being proud of it yes i've done all those horrible things though look at who i am now and what i'm doing for it and it's okay that's part of my journey that's part of my life and just sharing that with others i'm a very aware of and and it's just got something to add. just and i just want to add to what paul just said that 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 there are tens of thousands of other people like us who can't tell their story because of the intense shame and stigma of gambling and it's one of the reasons we do it um this particular this way of of distilling your story for for theater because this these videos have come out of live theater work that we've done for years uh, and the, and those stories were meshed they were you know intertwined we were we would walk across the stage and and in and out of each other's stories and that that took some brain power to um you know th- then you had to use a different part of yourself um and a different uh, and and then there was that supporting of each other we knew we were held by each other when we were on a stage we were held by the others because we knew we knew each other's lines and if somebody missed a beat somebody else would find a way to step in and get you back on track again and so there is that that sense of creativity and 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 distilling the story um when you use this form of um of telling a story you distill it down because you, our stories are all mammoth all of them they're all like a thousand times bigger than what you saw in that uh, in those short videos so you have to distill it to what are the what are the things you want to say now and and i do and some of us do some speaking as well and it's helped enormously with that because you can take it down to like poetry I was just going to say uh, it's like it, it was like poetry for me yeah. you just took the words out of my mouth yeah yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's it's a challenge to learn to do that as well 
been a personal challenge for me, but you know. And for me, when I think back, if I had come across, uh, you know, lived experience programs like these and uh, pe- people like these, then I might never have separated. And when I think of so many other people who are going through this journey, uh, awareness and, uh, you know, that is the key, I would say. So people like you are most important in carrying that message. Okay. Thank you. That's a good segue to Judy. You know, I realize the time, I don't quite understand, you know, is, we have to finish. Is that right, Rachel? What, how does it work? Um, m- more sessions start at eight o'clock. Yes. <clears throat> they yeah. don't start in this Zoom meeting. Oh, so um, if you want, if you know. So not, we have to clear the room, do we, for the next meeting? You don't, no, you don't have to clear this okay. sort of room for the next meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing to say is that this recording is going to be placed on that page that your session had. Um, and there's actually a discussion box next to that session. So, um, if I, in fact, I suppose I'm speaking to people that might be watching the recording yes. um, in the future. <laughs> so if anybody's watching this recording, I'm sure the group would really love you to put your um, responses and feedback and um, reactions. I thought it was fantastic um, into that discussion um, section of that page. And that'll be there, you know, for quite a while to come. So okay well great and and i just wanted to say leone if you want to give me your email address we have next tuesday another a session with for services for older adults you oh, might be interested in, and it will yeah. be a different person's uh story so if you could put it in the chat box your yeah or, i'll do that you know, now yeah. that'd be great and it makes me think that I should just show the slide of the contact so that the people who might see it, if, um, in, anyway, you know, I'll do, I'll just show this one slide. Uh, oh, sorry. I think if you just share with the first option, that's just share whole screen. But I want the. mm. Is that the feedback? Oh no. Yeah. Oh gosh. (laughs) Your goshes are being recorded. Oh. (laughs) That's okay. Um, This has run very very smoothly. Tech tech. That's that's the slide I'd like so other people who are not here now (laughs) or and and you also you know I'd love to be in in touch with uh, with with all of you actually to look at further possibilities of collaboration and the the last thing I wanted to ask is um, whether for us to keep on going what we really do value enormously is your feedback so it's both of huge value to our participants to know the impact that they're having and for us to receive ongoing funding to continue. But it's been really too lovely to be with you. I'm always the one who's a little bit concerned of the numbers. Catherine's the one who says it's the right people are here for the right reasons. And I feel we've really had the right people in the room. And maybe we can um, go broader, even if I have a sense that there could be some more collaboration with us.